Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and before we get to the video I just want to show you guys the final product right here This is what we're gonna be building just a simple application in react where there's a search bar at the top and a bunch of names as you can see So just an example a piece of like a file with data with fake data that we're, we're using and if I want to for example filter and search for a certain person Let's imagine I want to search for this person who's named Oven. I can just come here and search for Oven and it will automatically filter for the person. I can search for whoever I want. If I want Liza, I can just say Liza. As you can see right here, it automatically searches and filters everything. So it's a really nice product. Uh, it's great for every single type of application. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this. Okay, guys, now let's go into the part of the video where I show you guys how to make this. Well, the data, first of all, that we're using is this file right here called mockdata.json. And basically, this file I got by literally, there's a website called, I think it's mock, Mockaroo. Yeah, it's really nice. I use it whenever I'm making this kind of applications, which I need fake data. And you can literally just add fields right here, which uh, you just put with the fields you want. And for, for this example, I just got like a simple set of data where we got people with first names, last names and emails and also gender. Yeah, this is the, the data file that we, we got. And basically you can just click on download data. You can also choose the amount of rows. I chose a thousand because that was the one, the amount that we could get for free. And I just downloaded the data. It brought up, oh, I also changed it. I also changed this to JSON because currently it's CSV. I changed it to JSON and I downloaded the data and just put it into my React application, which means now I have a, p a file which is kind of like fake data that we can use in our application. If you want to use that, you can use that. If you want to use any data that you have, like you're querying it from a database, you can use it the same way. It's all the same, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. So in this application, the only UI component we might want to have is just a very simple input. So let's create an input over here by writing input give it in a, a type of text and also like just so it looks a little bit better let's just give it a placeholder and I'll say something like search dot 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 okay that, that's fine and then we can close the input so basically we just created our input and that's literally it for the only UI components that we want to have in our application. The next thing we actually want to have is we want to display the data, right? We want to be able to look at the data and see it in our screen. As I mentioned before, we have the mock data JSON dot JSON. And if you're using this one as well, you can just import it at the top. So import, I'm going to call it JSON data. And I'm going to say from dot slash mock data dot JSON. So we just got our data. And our data is literally just an array of JSON objects. So you can see this is an array. So we're basically importing over here. JSON data is an array containing all the different users we want to have in our application. And if we want to display an array in our JSX, then it's as usual, we can just come here and say JSON data, and we can map through every element in this array, in this array, and just say val, and also grab the key. And as usual, we can just return uh, for example, like a div, and inside of this div, we can display elements inside th that are contained in each element in the JSON data array. We can see that each element in the array, if I open it up, uh, each element in the array contains a first name, which is actually what we want to display right in our screen. We want to have an application which contains user's first name, and we want to filter for those. So I'm going to come here and say vol. And I want to just display vol dot first name, and you can see it also has autocomplete because it already knows that we have this. And you can see that after we do that, literally all the users appear in our screen. Why? Because we're mapping through every element in JSON data, and we're returning a div containing the first name. I actually want to uh, just come here and, and give this, make this a paragraph. <laughs> Not that this will change anything. It's just that I want to kind of style it a bit later. So let's make it a paragraph. So you can see we just added a paragraph tag to the to the name over here, I'm going to delete this, you can see they're kind of spaced out, as you can see. And obviously, it looks horrible. So let's kind of give this a bit of CSS. And before we actually give the CSS, let me come here and give this a class name. So class name, I'm going to give this a class name of user. So the div, each user will have a class name of user. And I'm going to set the key equal to key so that we don't have an annoying warning that always happens in react. So now that we have that we can start styling our application so it looks a little bit better. The first styling feature that I actually want to to, to do is basically just give this a display 
of flags, right? Because uh, almost every single application I have, I make stuff have display flags because just a really nice way of making stuff responsive and centered. So I'll just justify stuff to the center. So justify content center. And I'll also align items center. Okay. And also, I really need to give this a flex direction because currently, if I save this, it will ruin the flex direction. I need to make it equal to columns so they are stacked on top of each other. And if I save this, you'll see everything will be centered and perfect. And they're also like kind of spaced out. So that's great. But I also want to change the font family because I hate using this, this font family that already comes. I love using Arial, by the way. So I just turn everything into Arial. As you can see, in my opinion, it looks better. And what else do we need? Well, let's just grab every input. Let's just grab the input and style the input a bit. So we want to make the search bar a little bit bigger. Uh, we also want to margin top it so that it doesn't, it's currently like stuck right over here. We want to make it like a little bit more. So 20 pixels. Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, it's kind of pushed down. And what else we want, we want to increase the width to like uh, 350 pixels, something like this, and the height to like 40 pixels, just make it a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Yeah, that's too big, actually. So let me make this 300 pixels. And finally, just for the input, the last thing I just want to uh, kind of like increase the font size and make it like 20 pixels, maybe. Yeah, that's okay. We just have here a simple search bar where we can search for stuff. Obviously, nothing is currently being filtered. And finally, I just want to add a padding left here. By the way, this kind of irritates me a bit if I don't. So we this kind of like pushes a bit and we're not writing stuff right over here. Now we finished styling our input. So what do we want to style now? Well, the only thing I really need to style now is basically access all the paragraph tags because you can see they're kind of like spaced out. And I don't want it's it's too spaced out in my opinion. If we make this zero, for example, it will just collapse everything together. I want to make this about like 12 pixels. Um, that's too much. I want to make this like 10 pixels. Maybe the way it was before was better. No, this is actually better. So we can see right here. And I also want to increase the font size for this. So font size, let's make this 18 pixels. Let's take a look. You can see it increased the size. It looks better, right? So basically, this is how all the styling we're going to do in this application. Now let's start working with the functionality of basically filtering everything in our data. So how we're we actually going to do this. First of all, we're going to import use state, because we want to have a state that is going to represent the search term that we're currently writing in our input, right? So basically, if we import use state, we can come here and say const. And we want to, for example, create a state called search term. And set search term. And we're going to make it equal to use state. And it's just going to be a string. Basically, what we want is we want to search this is going to represent whatever we're writing in this input. And in order to make that happen, we can give this an on change event. So we're going to come here to the input and make this on change. I'm just going to increase the size a bit because we're now writing a bunch of code and we don't need to see what's happening. So on change, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab the event. And we're going to pass an anonymous function which to set search term equal to event dot target dot value, right? So we're basically just setting the, the, the search term equal to event dot target dot value. And now search term is equal to whatever we write in this input, which is perfect, right? But here is where everything starts getting a little bit more interesting. So basically, currently, we're just looking through the whole, like the whole file containing the data, and we're mapping through every single element. So we're, we're adjacent data is just an array containing every element. So instead of displaying and mapping through every element in the JSON data to display, we don't want to display every element, we just want to display the ones that look similar to whatever we wrote in this search term in this search bar, right. So basically, we want to use a JavaScript function, which is very famous called filter. And if you don't really know uh, how to use filter, just like with map is very similar. But if you've never worked with filter before, I definitely recommend just like watching a very like a small YouTube video on it is not that hard. However, uh, it might, you might be a bit confused if you've never worked with filter before. I should have a video on filter. I have I, I don't know if I do. But if I don't, I'll actually make a video on it. It's a really interesting function. Basically, what it does is we can come here and say instead of mapping through JSON data directly, we want to map through JSON data that is filtered. So we're going to filter through the JSON data first. 
so that we're only mapping through the, J the array called JSON data, which has the, the values that we want to keep. So the ones, the ones that look like whatever we wrote here. So in order to do that, filter is just like map. We can write a value. And I'm just going to create a function here. And inside of filter, we can ask to see what we want to keep, right? If I want to keep, for example, all the values, I can just say return value and uh, literally it won't filter anything. But we actually just want to filter values if, uh, first of all, we want to display it if we don't have actually, we, we haven't re wrote, like written anything in our search bar. So if we haven't, if search term equal to an empty string, then we want to just return vol because we don't want to, we want to return everything in the, in the data. So this is one case. But else, if, if basically the value dot first name, so if the current value the first name, and we want to turn it equal, equal to lowercase, and we want to ask if it includes the search term when it's lowercase. So I know this might look kind of confusing, but I'll definitely explain to you guys right now. Basically, what I'm asking here is this function right here will loop through every element in JSON data, uh, in the JSON data array. And it's going to basically ask first, well, is, is the search term empty? If it isn't, then it's going to come over here, which usually it isn't. So for example, if there's a user called Paquito, you can see this guy right here, right? And imagine the search term if I wrote here PA, right? If I wrote PA, currently it's not working because we haven't finished it yet. But if I wrote PA, then obviously PA is part of Paquito. So what it's going to ask is, well, first we're, we want to return value if a value the first name so if the current value we're ma we're looping through inside of the array if we turn it equal to lowercase because this thing is lower it's case sensitive so if the current value for example paquito includes a, a part like a, a, the the search term that we added here which is pa which it does then we want to return this so it's only going to return the values inside of the array that contains inside of it somewhere the string that we wrote over here. This is a substring of one of the values in the array. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys, but this is actually something that it's quite confusing. But I like this is the idea, right? You're only returning the values that are similar to whatever you wrote. So I'm going to refresh this page right here. And let's start working with this. You can see that after this, it should be filtered, the array should be filtered, and we should be only mapping through the elements that are filtered. So let's come over here. And let's try to search for, uh, I don't know, Sergey. So let me write here, sir. And you can see that it automatically it starts filtering. And if I delete something, it filters to accor accordingly to whatever I wrote currently. So I can search for Aussie, as you can see, and it filters perfectly. I can search for whoever I want. I can search for, I can search for Brooke, for example. And here's where the lowercase becomes important. If we didn't have this lowercase, and I wrote here, Venya, for example, Venya, this should return Venya as it does. However, if we didn't have the two lowercase, it wouldn't because the V isn't capitalized and in our data file, the V is. So we're just transforming everything to lowercase so we don't get that confused and we're, we're comparing just for the characters in like in, instead of comparing based on uh, like how, if it is lowercase or capital letters, you know? So this is the basic idea. This is the project. Um, I really hope you guys use this. Uh, I, I really enjoy making this. Uh, you, there's like so many use cases you can use this in and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. Comment if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer you guys. And subscribe because I'm posting every single day and I really appreciate it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.